Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. You know what I'm going to say. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thank you for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer, this is one that Joshua sent me from Texas. This is Austin Beer Works, and they're out of Austin, imagine that. This is Heavy Machinery, a seasonal IPA. The bottom of it says, this can contains specialty IPA. But let me tell you what it does not contain. A date! <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to go on with this. The can is very unique. Uh, it has a lot of stuff on the back. It's very humorous. Uh, and I'll read you a portion of this. Uh, Austin Beer Works suggests staying away from acetylene torches, backhoes, chippers, shredders, dairy milking apparatus, edible underwear, uh, falcons, go daddy, hydraulics, ice picks, jello, KFC, letter hosing, Macro, macro, micro gravity, nail guns, Oklahoma, pilates, equipment, quilting, hoops, rubber gloves, sing-alongs, yada, yada, yada. Do not operate one-armed bandits, two-live crew, three-leg races, four-man bobsleds, five, I mean, this, this goes on and on, all the way down to can. And it's, it's like the law, it's very unique can, even if you don't like the beer, the can's rather humorous to read it. Now, I'm not going to read everything that's on the can, because it's written in really small letters all the way around the can so there's the big a for austin beer works in the front there this is an american double imperial ipa 10 percent this is a 16 ounce can so big beer so come on from texas too thanks joshua i appreciate you sending me those beers uh the uh, food pairing is cuisine is barbecue the cheeses are peppery moderate pepper jack sharp blue cheddar and more puns and cheeses gorgonzola and limburger the meat for this is game, grilled meat, and salmon. Your stronger dishes go well with your IPAs, especially your double IPAs. So, big old steak go well with this, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, I got some burgers on the grill. I need to go check on them here in just a minute or two. The uh, glass rack for this is a snifter. Since it's such a large beer, I got the double glass. You can also use the tulip of an over oversized wine glass. Don't think there's anything else we need to discuss on this one. So we're going to pop the cap, we're on a roll with canned beers. Well, I can smell it from here. It smells very, very sweet and pleasant, almost like pineapple. Alright guys, very nice pour, a uh, good finger and a half of head there. Very orange and tangerine. It is not super clear. Uh, it either has a, a slight chill haze on it or it is an unfiltered IPA. It looks very nice and tangerine in the glass. That's the word, ain't it? Tangerine. I've used it many times. Alright, guys, it looks very nice in the glass. Off white head, very creamy looking. Almost looks like yogurt sitting in the top of it. Let's get a nose on it. Wow. What an aroma. And it is pineapples and it's grapefruits and it's mangoes. And it's apples and it's pears. And it's wonderful smelling. My gosh. Let's see if we got a commercial description here. Commercial description. This monster of an IPA is loaded with Simcoe, one of my favorites. Just dry hopped a batch downstairs today. Citra and a tannum. That's probably not how it's pronounced, A-H-T-A-N-U-N, hops, giving a huge citrus and pine aroma that pack as much punch as Sam Elliott's mustache. I heard that. This beer is light amber in color and features a strong caramel and Vienna malt backbone to complement those intense hops. Very nice. 
Got a very nice nose. Very, very, very floral, very pleasant, very sweet smelling. Well, guys, can't wait to dig in. Let's do it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Joshua. Thanks again, buddy. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. Very sweet. Very tangy. That beer can get tangy. If it ain't a fruit beer or sour. This is a big beer, though. There is a slight alcohol presence, but it's 10%. Wow. A very nice beer to finish up the evening with, which is probably what I'll do with this. This will probably be the last beer of the day. Oh, yeah. This will be very excellent with that burger. It's going to be coming off the grill here shortly. All right, guys. It's right out of the fridge. It's wonderful. It's deliciously grapefruity, pineapple-y. I usually don't get a lot of... I get grapefruit sometimes, but I don't get a lot of pineapple. This is I'm getting pineapple on this one, so... Very pleasant. We're going to let it warm up. Be right back. Do that final chug thing. Stick around. All right, guys. I'm back. Got just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more than a little bit. Mm. Pretty damn impressive beer. Joshua, thanks again for sending this to me. This is very tasty, very good. If I could get this beer, you would see a lot of this in the fridge. For a double IPA, guys, it's almost a tenth. But it don't have a date on the can. I don't understand that. That blows my mind. I mean, I don't care if they're doing some kind of special packaging like 21st Amendment does and they take a little cardboard thing and wrap it around their four beers and, and I think they may date that, but if, if so the craft beer stores take it out of that four pack and they set them on the shelves, you have no dating whatsoever. So, I'm not a big fan of that. I think each can ought to have it on there and that's what I'm going to stick to, so I don't choke. Very tasty, guys. If there was a top ten list of double IPAs, this one would probably be on it. It's that tasty. And if it had a date on a can, it would probably have got a ten for me. So it does not have a date, so it gets the nine. Guys, step up to the plate and date each can. That's what I'm going to say. Beer Advocate says, because like I said, I only bought one. I didn't buy this. I only got one of these, so there's no way for me to know. How long it may have sat on a shelf or in the carton or or whatever. So uh, needs to have it on the can, and they had it on the other can. No, that was the that was yesterday's beer. So this is the only one we've done from them, and it does not have it. So Josh, Joshua, if you know the deal on this, how it's packaged, if there was a date on it, you might put those in the comments. So this give me an idea, but still, it needs to be on the can so I don't have to get correspondence from you and I figure it out for myself. So with that being said guys I'm gonna stick uh, to the nine. It could have got to ten if it had to date. Beer Advocate has ninety four which is outstanding. And Rake Beer says no score requires more grades, more uh, ratings they say. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine or ten. So that could that could go with that. I don't know what they're saying. So Guys, it's a 10 beer as far as I'm concerned. It would definitely be on the top 10 list for double IPA. So let me know if you've had it. If you're down Texas way and you can get this beer, give me some comments back on this one. I don't know what the distribution is on this and how far out of Texas it does go. I'm kind of thinking it doesn't go far out of Texas if it hasn't been rated on uh, rate beer yet. So, guys, that being said, let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. Y'all post your comments down there. I like responding to them. See y'all tomorrow.